It's time to get inside the Giants huddle. Huddle up, huddle up, huddle up. On Giants.com. Here we go, here we go. And the Giants mobile Get them in there, let's go. Part of the Giants podcast network. Welcome to another edition of the Giants huddle podcast. I'm John Schmelk. As the Giants continue to add players in free agency, we get to know them a little bit. Today, we're going to do three players. Paris Campbell, a player they acquired, a wide receiver from the Indianapolis Colts via uh, Ohio State. A lot of injuries. His first three years came back. Had a nice year last year, over 60 catches, 600 yards. We'll talk to him. Then Jeff Smith, the wide receiver special teamer and former quarterback in college that came over from the Jets. We'll find out how he's going to contribute to the team. And then we're going to have Rakeem Nunez Roches, also known as Nacho, a defensive tackle that's coming over from the Buc- Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Uh, that'll be our final interview today. It's all brought to you by PSE&G, energy efficiency for game time and anytime. Visit PSEG.com slash Giants for discounts, rebates, and home energy assessments. Now let's get to our first interview, a player that should help the Giants passing game this year. And now we're joined by one of the newest Giants, wide receiver Paris Campbell. Paris, how are you, man? I'm great, man. Excited to be here. How you doing? I'm doing great. Why New York? Uh, I mean, look at the offense. Uh, it's trending. It's trending. You got Daniel Jones, uh, Sanquan Barkley, uh, just like two top guys. Um, but further than that, you can just see the excitement that they play with, um, how fun it looks, um, how fluid it is, getting guys in the right position, the right spots to make plays. Um, you know, it's, it's it's something that I feel that I can step into and my my full potential can be tapped into. Uh, I think the sky's the limit with his offense. Um, and farther more than that, the entire team, I just feel like it's trending in the right direction. What is it about that you've heard from maybe people you know here or anybody else about the culture here that Joe Shane and Brian Dable are trying to build? Yeah, um, from what I heard, um, just family atmosphere, family environment. Um, and, you know, that's, that's what means the most to me. You know, when you're in a place that actually cares, cares about the players, obviously cares about winning, um, but wants to do it all together. Uh, that's what it means the most to me. And, you know, just having guys be tight, close-knit group, um, I think that, that's what makes a, t- a team go. Um, and then you can have fun doing it. You mentioned some of the X's and O's watching the Giants offense looks free. looks like guys are having fun. What is it about the way Dable and Kafka run this offense that makes you think you would be a good fit inside of it? Yeah, um, I just think the, the versatility of it. Um, you got different guys in different places. Uh, making plays like from anywhere on the field, whether that's outside, inside, um, and you know, obviously talking with those guys and you know them having watched me play and knowing my game, um, I think it's just going to be a, a perfect fit. Um, obviously, I feel like I have a lot of versatility in my game. Uh, so, so you know, when you look at the offense, like I said, versatility, versatility, versatility. Um, so I'm, man, I'm just excited. I'm really excited. For Giant fans that maybe haven't watched a lot of Colts football over the last few years. Tell them what you bring to the field as a player. Yeah. Um, first of all, man, I just – I'm a team guy, man. I'm all about the team, all about helping the team win. Um, but furthermore than that, just – I feel that I'm a dynamic player. Um, you know, I feel like I can make plays on that field and, you know, obviously give give the fans a show, but make plays, make plays for the team that's going to help us win games. Um, and like I said, the versatility, I think it brings a different dynamic to the offense, uh, the speed. Um, everything, man. I just, uh, I'm excited for this opportunity. If you describe your game in one word, what would it be? Fast. Fast. Um, no matter what it is on the field, no matter what I'm doing, I'm going to make sure I do it you know, to my full capabilities, and I'm always going to be running fast, that's for sure. <laughs> you mentioned your versatility. Maybe three quarters or so of your snaps in, in the pros have been in the slot. Mm-hmm. College, you played a lot in the slot as well. Where do you think you've grown being in the league to, as you mentioned, become more versatile and get more snaps and be um, just as effective outside as you are inside? Yeah, uh, I think I've really developed as a route runner. Um, I think coming out of college, well, in college, um, I really wasn't asked to, you know, run a lot of the route tree. I ran a lot of slants, drags, uh, corners, just simple things. Um, But I really feel like as I've come into the league, um, I've been able to expand on what I can do. And it's not that I I felt like I could never do those things. I just wasn't asked to. So um, obviously getting more reps and being more comfortable, whether that's inside or outside, just running the full route tree, uh, I I feel like I really developed. How how are the first three years of your time in the league trying to deal with the the variety of injuries? And what kind of challenge was that for you physically but also mentally to try to fight through that? And you finally broke through last year. You played all the games and and you were very productive. And it was tough. To be honest with you, it was tough. And, you know, 
I don't shy away from talking about it uh, because it's what made me. Um, it's it's part of me, part of my story. Um, obviously, it was tough physically just because it was things that you know just I couldn't shake. Like there were freak accidents, unavoidable things, things that you know happy happen to unlucky people, I guess. Um, and you know that's you know how some people describe it, but I, I describe it as things that I had to go through to get who I was really supposed to be and really understand my purpose um, and mentally. Um, you know, when the game's taken away from you, obviously you love it so much. Um, when it's taken away from you three consecutive years, um, you know, it, it's tough. But on, a, on the other hand of it, like I, like, I would never take this game for granted ever again because it's gotten taken away from me so much. Um, you know, so if anybody's, you know, questioning my love for the game, like, nah, like, I, if I'm here, it's, it's going, I'm doing it 110%, and I, you know, I love it. What did you learn about yourself going through all that? Um, I learned a lot, actually. Um, you know, I had I was in some dark times, and you know, I, I seen sides of myself that I, you know, never thought I would see. Um, but the the positive of it is, I got so low, but I was able to battle my way back. Um, and you know, you you go through things as football. You're gonna go through adversity all the time. Um, you know, you bounce back and come back all the time. But like those those three years, like going through those injuries, you know, having me at my lowest. You know, times where I thought about giving up and, you know, just walking away. Um, being able to, like, battle back from all that stuff, man, like, it really, it showed me a lot of who I was as a person, as a man, uh, as a father, as a husband, like, everything. Uh, it, it, showed, it showed me that I, I can battle through anything, honestly. And I'm sure Giant fans want to know, you're healthy now, and are you back to that 4-3-1 guy that they oh, saw yeah. in the, the combine at 40? Abs absolutely, absolutely. I think, uh, if I'm not mistaken, I had the fastest ball carrier speed last year, so I think we checked we check that box. <laughs> We've talked about you on the field. What kind of guy are the Giants getting in the locker room, and, and what type of person are you off the field? Man, I, I, I try to lead by example. Um, you know, I, I usually don't say a whole lot. I, I, obviously, I have to, you know, earn my keep around here, you know, coming in with, with the new team. Um, you know, so obviously I'm gonna come in and just try to get to know guys first, man, and just, and you know, I'm just be myself. You know, I don't, I don't have to be this rah rah guy. I don't have to try to be something I'm not, man, because I feel like I, I get along with people easily, um, easy going guy, fun guy. Uh, but you know, I, I just love ball. I love winning. Um, you know, I, I think that'll mold well with, with the guys in the locker room. We were talking before we started. You're a Midwest guy. What do you feel about being in uh, New York City? Yeah, <laughs> it's definitely a change of pace. Uh, it's new for me, uh, you know. But you know, I'm I'm excited. I'm excited for what what what's to come. And you know, obviously, I'm gonna do some touring. I uh, can't get trapped down. I heard is if you get if you time it up wrong, you can be stuck somewhere for three hours. So I'm gonna have to make sure I, <laughs> I time it up right. Uh, Confirmed, by the way, yeah. true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, but no, nah, man, I'm excited. I'm excited to get my family here. Uh, my wife, my two kids, I'm excited for them to come see the city. Uh, my son has this infatuation with New York. Don't know where it came from before I even signed. Like, don't know where it came from. So excited to get him down here, man. But, you know, just ready for this this next step of our, 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 our chapter and our journey. All right, finally, do you have any connections with, with any of the guys or, or coaches here that you've talked to, and what have they told you? Yeah, uh, so obviously Coach Gro, uh, you know, he was in Indy with me. Um, and he's he's just really told me about obviously Dave's Joe um, the offense um, starting with uh, Dave's and Joe just how they really care about the players um, and you know how they always put the players first and you know that's what matters the most to them um, you know so obviously that's just welcoming to hear um, and then just talking about the offense like he like I said like he 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 told me how it's just free how guys have freedom to be themselves in the offense obviously you know. There's some limitations, but as far as like getting out on the field and getting open, like he said, there's a lot of freedom. Um, and, you know, I think that's the best thing because guys aren't robots. Guys are out there just being themselves, using their, their talents and, um, you know, playing how they see fit. Because at the end of the day, like players know how to play. So just just let them go play. Um, and obviously, um, you know, just having my, my, my past with Grove, me and him are, are close. Uh, you know, so having a familiar face here helps. Um, and actually, I'm in Arizona right now training. Uh, Isaiah Hodgins is out there training with me. And, you know, so he's, he's told me so much just about the offense, the organization, the people, uh, the facilities, everything, man. And um, having him out there and training with him is, is cool because I'm kind of, you know, getting to know him and we're kind of building a relationship. So excited for that to continue on. Um, so, 
yeah, and then obviously, you know, Bobby Okereke, uh, that's my guy through and through. Uh, so excited to, you know, embark on this new journey with him as well. You've talked to all these guys. Are you, like, sitting there on the plane envisioning how they're going to use you in this offense already? Yeah, no, for sure. Like, my flight here, I'm just – like, I'm so – I haven't stopped smiling, to be honest with you. Uh, but I'm just excited, man. Like, you know, t Coach Daves, he FaceTimed me, like, three times yesterday. Uh, and, like, that – like, for that, like, that, that just does so much for me because, like, every head coach in the league is not just FaceTiming his guys, man. You know what I mean? Like, so that says a lot just from Jump Street. Um, and just talking to him about, you know, my style of play and, you know, what he likes and what he sees, um, you know, just – I'm just excited, man. I am I think it just comes down to that. I'm just excited. Well, we can't wait to see you on the field, uh, making those dreams come true. Paris, we appreciate the time. Thanks so much. Thank you. Appreciate you. And now we're joined by one of the newest members of the Giants, wide receiver, Jeff Smith. Jeff, why did you decide to come to New York? Uh, I just knew as, as soon as he – as soon as my agent told me that, uh, that they were interested, that y'all were interested in me coming here, uh, I'm familiar with the place, you know, I just had a son who's still, you know, still growing and I'm just, a, I'm just familiar with the, with the area, so it just made, made the most sense. You know, I should have said come to the New York Giants. You were already in New York, given you were from the Jets, so is, is that kind of nice? You don't have to worry about, like, moving and all that stuff? You're just kind of moving to the other side of the state? It is nice. Uh, definitely, yeah. So we were, of course, way further into New Jersey. Uh, so it is nice being over here next to the water, being able to see the city. Um, I know my wife is going to want a spot seeing the city. So we'll probably talk about that today. So, yeah. If you describe your game for Giant fans, how would you describe it? Uh, speed, fast. I'm, uh, I'm going to work hard and, uh, and uh, I'm going to ball. How do you think that's going to apply to what the Giants are going to want you to do here? Uh, definitely, you know, bringing a different aspect of speed to the game. Um, just being able to play multiple spots on the field and doing, doing whatever they need me to do. Yeah, you talk about his vers your versatility, playing multiple spots. Offensively, you've kind of seen what Brian Dable, Mike Kafka like to do. How do you think they can utilize your skill set best? Uh, like I said, like the one thing I talk, talk to them the most about is just being able to utilize my speed to the best of the ability for the team. So whichever way they have me, whether that's running deep passes or getting short passes to, you know, find a seam somewhere. So just whatever they need me to do. And then you've played a lot of different special teams unit. You've been a gunner, kickoff return, punt return. Uh, tell fans why special teams are important to you, because they have to be in order for you to be good at it, right? And, and what you bring to the field on specials. So special teams, I think that's the main reason why I'm still able to First of all, sit in this seat here, you know, that's kind of helped me keep my job for the past four years. Uh, so it's been very special to me being, being able to feed, feed my family now. Um, so I think that's just how you earn your, your space on the team. You know, that's how you earn the uh, respect of your teammates. And um, I'm looking forward to it giving me more chances on the offensive side of the ball, too. Given your local, were you able to kind of keep an eye on the Giants last year and, and see how well they did in the first year under a new regime? Definitely, yeah. So we had a couple of teammates from there that uh, I've played with for the past couple of years come here, and uh, and it was dope to see them be, be able to come here and uh, actually play and, you know, get to experience that. So it was definitely something that you obviously see because we're in the same stadium. Um, so uh, it was cool to see that too. Can you tell me about some of those connections and, and what they've told you before you got here? Oh, uh, yeah. So I talked to, you know, Lawrence Cager, uh, Tyan, and uh, Jason Pinnock. You know, they, they love it here, and they obviously got the uh, – opportunity to play and um, so I hit them up uh, whenever I found out that I uh, that I was coming here you know asked them like where I should live at and things like that so um, I'm looking forward to looking forward to it for sure. What did they tell you about what happens inside the building that got you excited about becoming a giant? Just like the overall just camaraderie of the uh, organization the community the uh, locker room and things like that so um, just looking forward to being able to meet the guys you know reach out in the uh, community as well. And um, I'm just real, real blessed to uh, be here today. We talked to you about you on the field. How about off the field? What are the Giants getting in you as a locker room guy, as a person? Uh, I'm definitely a guy, you know, whether things are going my way or not, I'm going to support my guys no matter what. Um, you know, I'm a guy that's going to lift them up when they're down and uh, things like that. Because, you know, I've been having to fight for my spot for like so long. So I know what it's like to, you know, maybe be somewhere that you don't want to be. Um, so just kind of like be that voice of like reason, that voice of just like, um, I guess like encouragement um, and just go out there with, with my guys and ball. Finally, have you had a chance to lobby yet to 
use your old quarterbacking skills and, and <laughs> trick play stuff on offense? I have not, but I'm definitely going to for sure. That's not that's 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 going to be one of the uh, little wrinkles to, to my game too for sure. I was surprised that, that I didn't, that I didn't see any of that with the Jets. To be quite honest with you, hey, they don't matter no more. We're going to use it here at some point for sure. That's what we like to hear. Hey, Jeff, good stuff, man. Welcome to the Giants. Appreciate the time. And now we're joined by one of the newest members of the Giants, defensive lineman Rakeem Nunez Roches. Uh, Rakeem, welcome to New York, man. Man, thank you for having me. Why'd you pick New York? <sighs> a lot of deciding factors, but I mean, where the organization is at and where they're trying to go, I like that direction. I felt like I can be, you know, a part of the cause. Okay, you mentioned where they're at and where they're going. What impressed you about this organization and what they did last year in the first year of this new regime? I mean, in the beginning, y'all y'all were rolling. You know what I'm saying? Five and one, six and one, y'all doing great things. I know everything came to a halt, but you got young, great players. You got defense that has a camaraderie of trying to do things, but there was a little, you know, leaks in there, and I felt like I could fill that void. Is you excited to play next to guys like Leonard Williams and Dexter Come Lawrence? on now, you have a dominant Two guys right there that just do everything that you ask of them. And they, I just felt like their load was very heavy. And uh, if I could come here and take some of that off of them, guys hitting almost 1,000 snaps a year. And uh, that's, that's unheard of. I know you're a superstar guys, but I could just help a little bit. I feel like they can go to the postseason and do what they need to do. Now, you have some experience playing next to studs inside. You were with Vita Vea down there in Tampa Bay. What is it like playing against, uh, playing next to a guy like that who is a little different, but as effective as Dexter, but in different ways? I mean, playing against superstar guys like Vita Vea and the Dominican Sue, you, you have a, a sense of urgency about yourself. When these guys want to come off the field, there doesn't need to be any drop off. So, you know, you, you raise your sense of awareness, your sense of competition, because like I said, you don't want anything to change when they're off the field, and you also want them to be able to depend on you. So guys like that make you a better player, and you also push them. What would you like about Wink and his system that makes you think you're going to fit well? I mean, <laughs> we're going to be hands-on. I get to sit in the gap, put my hands on somebody, play double team, things that I like to do. I love to play blocks. I'm not always just getting up the field. I want to be assignment, sound football, let the linebackers scrape and do what they need to do, and let me just hold them off of them. I know the system's a little bit different, but very similar aggressive style to what Todd Bowles had down there, right? Exactly. And that, you see what I was able to do down there, I feel like I can do the same, if not better here. If you would describe your game to Giant fans in one word, what would it be? <laughs> Dominant. Aggressive. Can you get into why, why those two words? Uh, I mean, you don't find a lot of people that really are in love with the physicality of what it takes to be a great D-tackle. And I live for those double teams. I'm looking for those double shots every time. Maybe if you got to come chip with a tight end, come on, bring it. But I sit in there looking for that, and I like to play on the other side of the ball. Anybody that you know here that you've connected to, talked about before you got here? Coaches <sighs> or players? Um, on a personal level, I can't really say that. Like, I knew generally about, you know, a couple of players, but that's what I'm here for, to make that connection. That's what OTAs is for. Talk about yourself off the field. What kind of guy in the locker room are the Giants getting in, and what are Giant fans going to see from you off the field? Uh, to be honest, just a true professional. Like, I, I do everything right as far as with my family. I try to tell people, you know, I'm trying to be the father I didn't have. So, as you see, my family's here with me. Uh, I take them everywhere I go. Aside of that, I do a lot of investing. Aside of that, I do a lot, you know, with the community. But just doing things that you don't always see like we don't have to always do the flashy stuff we don't always have to go to the mall we don't always have to do that like what makes you a better man what makes you a better person outside of football because it's not going to last forever looking forward to getting a taste of new york city a little bit how much have you been here oh i've been here two days and i love it the view the food is immaculate the weather I, but everything else i am loving it i'm not gonna lie it's not florida oh no not at all <laughs> by a long shot but it definitely has its perks about it, and I'm excited to go see what the city has to offer. All right, I saved the serious stuff for last. Where'd Nacho come from? Oh, <laughs> I felt like I just did the same question. But, I mean, it really just came from my uh, first year in camp. I was uh, eating nachos. If you've ever been in the meeting room, it's very quiet. And I just had a snack, and I was just eating. <laughs> and uh, Dante Poe was like, Damn, Notch, and it just like stuck. And then it just kind of built from there. And then the guys was like, you know, you think it's your tackle, but it's nachos because I was always hustle to the ball. You like it? Yes, sir. I got a nacho right here, so I'm <laughs> in love with it. <laughs> I guess that was the case. Uh, it's great having you here, man, man, and we look forward to seeing you on the field. Thank you for having me.
We thank Paris, Jeff, and Rakeem, a.k.a. Nacho, for joining us. And by the way, you know, he showed at the end of that answer, his last answer, he's wearing a big silver chain. And I was trying to figure out all interview what it was. And it's literally a nacho with cheese dripping off of it. So needless to say, he uh, is embracing the nacho part of his persona. Uh, All three seem like really good guys. All have families, uh, adults, mature, good guys. So uh, three good additions to the Giants that should help in uh, all three phases, offense, defense, and special teams. Thank you for joining us on this episode of the Giants Little Podcast, brought to you by PSCNG, energy efficiency for game time and anytime. Visit pseg.com slash Giants for discounts, rebates, and home energy assessments. Next week, probably Tuesday, we're going to be joined by former Falcons general manager Thomas Dimitrov, who is now uh, the CEO of Sumer Sports, who's kind of a consulting firm and analytics company for NFL teams. So we have a really interesting talk about what they're doing, uh, but more importantly, kind of what the Giants offseason has looked like and, and how, they, how they build moving forward. So make sure you stay tuned uh, next week for that. But in the meantime, enjoy everything we've done this week. If you have this episode, go back, listen to the Darren Waller and Bobby Okereke interviews if you haven't done that already. Really great content. And thank you for being with us. We'll see you next time on the Giants Huddle.